Hi, everyone, and welcome. I am Liz with Premier Yarns. Um, I want to say hi to everyone and thank you for joining me this afternoon and spending a little bit of your Saturday with me. And thank you to Michaels for um, hosting this class. Um, as everyone joins, I love to see where you're joining from. So thanks for putting that in the chat. I'm over here in Louisville, Kentucky. Um, and I do these classes once a month, normally crochet. Sometimes I'll do some knit classes, uh, but it's usually crochet. So check the uh, class schedule and um, you, know, you can sign up for any of the free classes with me. New York, Philadelphia, from Pennsylvania. Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining. So let me show you what we're gonna to make today from Texas. Uh, this is a little crochet pillow. It's super cute and pretty easy to make. My, my camera like follows me, so I'm trying not to move too much. <laughs> it's uh, only a few rounds, so it actually works up pretty quick. And we're using this, some nice kind of thick yarn, so it's gonna be a quick project. So let's, oh, why am I getting notifications? Let's switch over to my overhand view and I'll show you the materials we're gonna to need to make this little pillow. So we're gonna need this loops and threads. This is our chenille yarn. It is a number seven. So this is a jumbo weight. This is kind of like, you know, on the much heavier side. The, um, on the label, it says an 11 and a half millimeter hook. But for these kind of projects, I use a smaller hook. Um, and this one is, I believe, an eight millimeter. Yeah, eight millimeter. But you're gonna use whatever you uh, get the correct gauge with, okay? So gauge is the really the important thing. The hook size is more of just like a recommendation. So just check your gauge with a pillow. It's not gonna be like super, super important. Whereas if you were making a sweater or something, you want your gauge to be like spot on because you want your sweater to fit properly. If the pillow is a tiny bit smaller or a tiny bit bigger, depending on your gauge, that's probably not gonna make that much of a difference. But just pick a hook that's com comfortable for you so that the stitches aren't too loose and or too tight, okay? And then we're gonna use, so this color, I forgot to say the color is the prince this one is the um sweet snuggles prince this color is pink multi so there's a lot of different multis and then i paired it with the sweet snuggles um solid so i used the white for this pillow but of course you can you can combo any colors that you want you could even do like one pillow with um the white in the center and the pink on the outside and then have the other side like pink and white or something like that or you could do all solid whatever you want to do um you can change it up as you want but each pillow only takes one ball of each so you can make a whole pillow with just the two balls and Liz, um, somebody has a six millimeter hook. Would that work or? Um, that might be a bit too small, but you can try it. I've used, with this one, this is like the thicker of the chenilles. I've used six and a half with a thinner chenille. You might have trouble seeing the stitches if they're that small. Um, I would say at like eight is kind of on the small side. If you're gonna go, I would go a little bit bigger. I think um, like a, maybe a nine or a 10, seven. I, I don't think I've ever seen a seven. I don't even know if a seven exists, but a six is probably gonna be too small. Sorry. <laughs> what about six and a half? Try six and a half. You might be able to make it, but it might just be too, too tight that you can't see your stitches. But if you can make it really loose with the six and a half, you can try it out. You, it might be more trouble than it's worth though. You might just want to try to get like an eight or a nine. Um, yeah, sorry. I, with hook sizes, it's kind of like, it's very dependent on your gauge and your tension and all that stuff. So uh, usually you just kind of try out what you can try out. And if, if you try that six and a half for me, I probably wouldn't be able to get it to work you might be able to get it to work just give it a try if you feel like it's not comfortable and you're not getting it to work you can have to buy an eight but you know they're they're pretty cheap okay so uh here's the pattern i printed out the pattern you should also have the pattern available um so we're just going to kind of go through the each round of the pattern and then hopefully we can finish uh one panel so i can show you how to put put it all together okay and we just need our hook our yarn and then we need some of this 
fiber fill to stuff the pillow, okay? We'll, we'll do that when we're all done getting through this. One note I wanna make before I get started with the first round is that I did make a mistake when I wrote this pattern and on round um, four, you want to change to the main color. It's gonna work the same way, but the pillow, the sample that I had, I changed to the contrast color um, on round three, not on round four. So on the pattern I put on round four, but you wanna change it on round three, but we'll go, we'll go through that. So just make a note on your pattern to change colors after you've done three rounds of the white, not four rounds, if that makes sense. Okay, so let's start. The first thing we need to start with is our magic ring, okay? So we're gonna go down here to the instructions. You can read all this information before you move on. If you wanna uh, watch the class or, or just kind of listen today and then redo it on your own. But we're gonna start with the CC, which is the contrast color. And my pattern tells me that the contrast color is the white. So let's just start with some of the white. And we're starting with a magic ring and most of these sort of patterns where you're starting in the round, a lot of times you'll start with a magic ring. So you probably know how to do that, but I'll show you here. And if you have any questions, you guys throughout, just interrupt me, okay? So this is how I do a magic ring. We start with the tail end over uh, to the palm, and then you're gonna wrap the tail end over your two fingers, your index finger and your uh, middle finger, and then take that tail, and then I just do like a crossover like this. So that way the tail, the part that's connected to the skein is crossed over the tail like that. And then I just rotate my hand and I grab that with my pinky. So that, that way I'm set up like this, okay? So this is how you wanna be set up. And I'm just holding on to that. And then I'm gonna take my hook and I start under the first strand and then I hook the second strand. Pull that second strand through and then just kind of rotate it out. And then there's my ring there, okay? So now once I have that ring, I can do a chain. So yarn over pull that loop through and that's my first chain. And then you can tighten this magic ring like that uh, to tighten it or loosen it. But usually we're gonna work some stitches into there before we tighten it. So I usually work the stitches into the ring and then I tighten it, okay? So let's see if I have a question. We got a lot of people here today, so I may have a lot of questions, guys. So bear with me as I go through these. Did you start with a darker color for the center and the lighter? No. I. I did the opposite of what you just said, KM, Catherine. But you can do it however you want. You can get creative. Yep, Carrie answered that, yay. Okay, so let's do the magic ring one more quick time, you guys, okay? Yep, I can do that again, tail. So tail over like the palm like this, right? And then I just kind of grab it with these two fingers to just to have a hold of it and then wrap that around your index and your middle finger and then cross it over so you have a crossover. So the tail that's connected to the ball is crossed over the tail, the actual tail, right? That's hanging. And then I just rotate my hand like that and grab it with my pinky. There's other ways to do this too. This is, <laughs> this is just my way. Um, now that you have it set up like this, you're gonna go under the first strand with your hook and hook on the second strand. So you pull the second strand under the first and then like that, okay? And then you just have that loop right there and you make a chain into that loop. So now you can take those fingers out, set yourself up so you're ready to crochet, right? However you hold your yarn and your hook, this is how I hold mine. And then you make a chain. So now we've gotten, if we look at the pattern, we have gotten from CC1, make a magic ring, we did that. And then it says chain three. So I just made that first chain, so I'm just gonna chain two more, right? So one and two. Now that I have three chains, one, two, three, it's kind of hard to see your chains with this chenille yarn, be aware, it's, it's very difficult to see 
your stitches, it takes some getting used to. Uh, but I have one, two, three chains, and that counts as my first double crochet. And now my pattern says work 11 double crochet into the ring. So we're just gonna work all those double crochets right into that ring to form um, like a circular piece, okay? So let's do some double crochets here. Yarn over, insert, I'm going right into that ring. Yarn over, and now I have one, two, three loops on my hook. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. We're gonna do this a bunch, uh, 10 more times, okay? So, yeah, you need hooks. This is crochet, so you need hooks. And we're gonna work 10 more of these. This is a double crochet. Yarn over, insert directly into the ring. Yarn over. Pull through, three loops on the hook. One, two, three. Yarn over, pull through the first two. Yarn over, pull through the next two. Okay, yarn over, insert into the ring. Yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Uh, we're gonna do, Lots of double crochets. We're going to do double crochets, single crochets, and half double crochets. And we are working in the round. Okay, so if you've done flat pieces, it's slightly different um, than working in the round. We're working directly into a ring instead of into a, um, a chain or into um, a stitch. And this little tail right here, you can work right over that. It's, it's still going to allow you to tighten it. Okay, so don't don't go too tight because with the chenille yarn, it tends to break a little more easily, um, but you can still work right over the tail of, of that magic ring. Okay, so yarn over, insert into the magic ring, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So I'm just going to go a little faster, but we're doing the same thing over and over. Yarn over, insert into the ring. Yarn over, pull up a loop, three loops on the hook. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Now, you see what I mean by the stitches being difficult to see? It kind of just looks like a big fuzz. Um, so you have to get used to working with this sh chenille yarn, but let's count because I was not paying attention. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven double crochets and that first chain three, which counts as a double crochet. So I have eight. And I want 12 according to my pattern. So yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. That's nine, yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, pull through two, that's 10. 11, and let's do that last one nice and slow. See my ring is still, like nice and loose and I still have that tail from the ring. I just kind of worked right over it if it got in my way. Yarn over, insert into the ring, yarn over and pull that loop up. Three loops on the hook, one, two, three. Yarn over again, pull through the first two, two loops left, yarn over, pull through the two loops that are left. And that leaves you with one loop on the hook to start on whatever you're gonna do next, okay? So now here's that little tail that's still there. You're just gonna pull that. And what happens is, just be careful, because like I said, chenille yarn is much more, um, it's a little bit more fragile than like wool or acrylic yarn, okay? So just pull that. And what happens is that circle that you've been working into is now completely gone, it's just, invisible because that magic ring allowed you to tighten it up because it's adjustable. It can expand and contract. Um, so that's the point. That's why we do a magic ring. So we have a nice, neat little center. 
sometimes if you're doing like grannies or other things like that, you may not use a magic ring. You may just use like a chain four and join, but then, and it has like a little hole in the center, which is part of the, the design. And that looks pretty too. Uh, but for a pillow, we want everything to be, we don't want it like holes in it, right? Okay, so let's move on. Hey Liz, what would you advise if somebody's saying that their uh, magic circle isn't closing? When you pull the, the um, let me show you again what how it closes. I'm gonna do it real fast. Here's my tail. Make my X, grab it, pull that through. Now let's say I work a single crochet into that magic ring. Okay, this is the tail that you left there. All you have to do to close your magic ring is pull that tail and see how that loop just goes right through like that, that's what it should do. So if it's not doing that, you probably just did it wrong. So maybe just try it again. Or the only other thing I could think of if it's not tightening is you either maybe did the magic ring wrong or this yarn kind of snagged itself somewhere and is about to break. That might be what happens too, because I, mean, I wanna show you guys, if you haven't, I'm pulling that, Boom, it's tight. This chenille yarn, see how easy I just broke that? And then what happens is this, the actual fuzz just falls right off. See, see that? Now what, and what it is, is it's just this um, thread with this fuzz surrounding the thread and it, it pulls off very easily. What happens when you're maybe seaming or doing something like a magic ring where you're pulling the yarn through is if some of this fuzz falls off and then you have a piece like this, this piece will kind of stop everything. Like it gets, it's, it gets stuck, right? And then that makes things hard to kind of maneuver. So if that happens, you really, the best thing to do is just start over. Just like pull that piece that's falling apart out, cut it off and start over on a, a nice smooth piece that doesn't have anything falling off of it. Because that could happen if parts fall off, it'll snag itself in there and get stuck somewhere, okay? So if you have never done a magic ring before, my suggestion is to try it a bunch of times on a nice smooth worsted weight yarn. So if you have something like, um, just like a um, soft classic, I don't have any right here. Just like a soft classic, number four, worsted weight acrylic yarn, something like that. That's the best um, thing to learn how to crochet on and to um, you know practice anything because it's nice and sturdy. You're gonna be able to see your stitches very, very well. You have, you know, it's not like a tiny hook that you have to use or anything like that. So if you're new to this, my suggestion is not starting with this yarn because it, it's a little bit fussy. So just practice a little bit with some worsted weight, smooth, light colored, nothing, nothing black. <laughs> it's hard to practice with black uh, yarn. And then once you get used to it, you'll be fine with the chenille, okay? All right, so let's move on to round two of our pattern. We're still working with the white. Now, uh, oh, I'm sorry, before we move on to round two, we have to join this round. So it says, we did 11 double crochet into the ring, we did that. And then it says, join with a slip stitch in third chain of beginning chain three. Again, it's gonna be hard to see your chains because we got this fuzzy yarn. It's very easy to see. Oh, this is what I was talking about. See this yarn here? You see how easy those stitches are to see? They all look like beautiful little Vs. They're very easy to work into because you can see them. This is a nice, smooth, this is kind of a lighter weight, but like a worsted weight, smooth yarn like this. Now you see my stitches here? They're harder to see those little Vs because of the, all the uh, texture. So what we need to do is find the third chain, one, two, and then this right here is the third chain. And I'm just gonna slip my hook under both loops of that third chain. I'm gonna yarn over, pull my hook through that third chain, and then pull my hook through the loop that was on my hook. I'll show you that one more time. 
The third chain is the top of the first double crochet because the first double crochet is a chain three. So one, two, third chain. If you really can't see the third chain, the other thing you can do is just count back. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. This is the twelfth double crochet. That's where I want to go into the twelfth stitch or really the first stitch of the round. Okay. So I'm just going to go under both loops of that first stitch of the round, which is the third chain of the beginning chain three, yarn over, pull that loop through, and then pull that through the loop that's on the hook. And that is a slip stitch and I have joined the round. Okay, so I joined my round with a slip stitch. Now I have 12 double crochets here. So for round two, we're going to begin with another chain three which counts as a double crochet again. And that's just normal. It's, you know, almost always a chain three counts as a double crochet. So we're gonna do chain, three chains. Yarn over, pull through. That's one chain, two chains. Yarn over, pull through, three chains. That's my first double crochet. And now it says double crochet into the same stitch. So we are increasing here. We're working two stitches into this first stitch. So yarn over, insert under that same stitch, which is right there. It's very hard to see. Yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. And now it says two double crochet in each remaining double crochet around. So into each of these double crochets, we are working two stitches. And um, that's how you create a flat circle. So anytime you're creating a flat circle, you have to increase um, around the diameter, okay? Because if you just put one stitch in each of those stitches, it will come up like a tube, okay? So we need to increase because of the, the distance around the circle is ex like expanding, right? So we're gonna put two double crochets in each of these double crochets. Now here's my first double crochet. It's very hard to see but I'm gonna yarn over and I'm gonna insert my hook under both loops of that stitch. There's a front loop and a back loop, front loop, back loop. I'm putting my hook under both of those loops, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, just like we did before. Now I need to make another stitch in that same space. We don't want to move over to the next one yet because we have to increase. So yarn over, I'm going in the same space under the two loops and making another double crochet. So now I have two double crochets in there. And now I'm gonna put two double crochets in each one of these stitches around. And if you're really having a lot of trouble seeing your stitches, just count, just keep counting and make sure at the end you have, uh, we started with 12, so we're, we're gonna need 24 at the end, right? So one and two into the same stitch. Next stitch is right here. There's a, two loops. I'm gonna go one, and two. Here's my next stitch. One and two. And the other thing about uh, the chenille yarn I always tell people is make sure you have a very well lit area that you're working in or even like if it's sunny out and it's not too cold, <laughs> you can work outside in the sun. That'll help you see those stitches a little bit better. But they can be very difficult to see with all this surrounding fuzzy texture. So we're putting two double crochets into each double crochet to increase my circle. That's two. That's two. Yarn here. Okay, now let's say I put it down. I'm like, oh, I can't, like, I don't know how many I did, okay. I'm not sure. So now I'll, I'll just count and make sure I'm on the right track. So here's my first one and then my second one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 
17, 18. Okay, so I know I put two in that last stitch. I'm at 18. I should have 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. And that means I'm on the right track. This looks like a stitch, but this is the slip stitch from the, from the beginning of the round. So 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. Okay, so now I have my 24 double crochets for round two. See how this first stitch is coming out of this slip stitch. So now we're gonna do the same thing that we did in round one. We're gonna join with a slip stitch to the third chain of the beginning chain three. Okay, so here's my beginning chain three. This is one chain, two chain, and this is the third chain. So here's kind of like the V. So the the first loop and the second loop. So I'm just gonna go under both of those loops with my hook and I'm gonna yarn over and pull through first one and then pull yarn up and then pull through the, don't yarn over again, just pull through the second loop on the hook to join with a slip stitch. And now I have 24 double crochets and we have a nice flat circle. So we're gonna continue similarly increasing around the circle, um, but a little bit different increments, right? So we're gonna, for round three, one, two, three, that's my first double crochet. And my pattern tells me to double crochet in the same stitch. So double crochet in the same stitch. And then it tells me to double crochet in the next stitch. So in my next stitch, I only want one double crochet. And now it tells me to work two double crochets in the next stitch. So here, this stitch, I'm gonna put two double crochets in there. One and two. Okay, so right before it said two double crochet in the next stitch, it gives me a little uh, star. And then it says double crochet in the next stitch, and then it gives me a semicolon. So what's between the star and the semicolon, the pattern wants me to repeat those instructions around. So after the semicolon, it says repeat from star around. So I'm just going to repeat two double crochet and next stitch, double crochet and next stitch, all the way around the circle. And because I ended with double crochet and next stitch just before the semicolon, I should end my round with double crochet and next stitch. That should be the last stitch of the round. I got a little knot here. And with this yarn, when you get a knot like this, it's not fun because it's hard to undo it. Yay, yay. I don't want to have to cut it. I might have to cut. It. All right, I won't spend too much time trying to unknot that. Let's see how far we can get before <laughs> before we get to that knot. Okay, so I put two in this stitch. I'm going to put one in the next stitch, and I'm going to put two in the next stitch. One, two, and now one in the next stitch and then two in the next stitch. I'm just repeating that sequence all the way around. One and two. One and two. Okay, Liz, a couple questions for you. Sure. So, um, the piece, so 
the piece should always be flat and not curled as a result of the increased stitches. Correct. Okay. And it then if it, if it curls, okay. you you may have done it might curl a tiny bit, like see how it's curling a teeny tiny bit, but you'll notice like um okay, so there's two different things. There's like a kind of a curving up upward like a tube and then there's like a curling like a almost like a ruffle right so if you have like a ruffling um usually that means you put too many stitches in you increased too much at some point if you've got like a little ruffle going on. um if you have it sort of making its way up like this like it's it's like turning into a, a tubular or circular or, or not circular like spherical um, that means you put too few stitches in. You have to increase it incrementally to make a nice flat circle. And then are you doing um, two double circles in each double circle, like the first round? The so the first round was just 12 double crochets. Then the second round was two double crochets in each double crochet. So two in each one around. So obviously that would be... Um, 24, right? So 12 plus 12 is 24 because we're just doubling it. And then in the third round, we're doing two double crochet in one stitch, one double crochet in the next stitch, two double crochet in the next stitch, one double crochet. So we're alternating two, one, two, one, two, one. And then if we continue this, like let's just say theoretically, um, what we would do is in the next round, we would go double crochet, double crochet, two double crochet, double crochet, double crochet, two double crochet. And then the next round we would go three sing so three singles, right? Double, 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 and then increase. So let's say, let's say increase. So when we put two double crochets in one stitch, that counts as an increase. So you would go stitch, 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 increase, stitch, 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 increase stitch 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 increase and then in the next round you would go four stitches stitch 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 increase stitch 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 increase and then the next round you would go five and then the next six so in that that's that's kind of like the formula so if you continue that formula you could just make a big, a big giant circle you could go on forever like that so yeah so you'll you'll see um it's a little different with single crochets but it's, it's basically the same concept. First, you start out with an increase in each stitch, and then the next round you do uh, no increase, increase, no increase, increase, and then the next round you do two no increases and an increase, two no, like that. Okay, <laughs> so that's probably over explanatory. And right here, I'm at my little knot. Look what happens. I have a knot here. So, what you would do if you have a knot and you can't get it out. See, I have that knot and I can't get it out. A knot is really easy to get out in worsted weight yarn, but not easy to, to get out in um, chenille yarn. So let's say you have a knot like that. Let's just pull out a couple stitches. And what we have to do, because we can't get the knot out, is just cut it and start like, just rejoin it, right? So I cut that knot out. I'll just cut it completely off of my ball. So now this would be the same case if you ran out of yarn, right? So let's see, I have two here. My next stitch I have to go, let's make one stitch. So I'm gonna start here. I'll show you how to, sorry, let me start over. So yarn over, insert into the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop. Now here I am at the next step where I go, have three loops on the hook. I go yarn over, pull through three. I mean, I'm sorry, yarn over, pull through the first two. And then normally we would go yarn over, pull through the second two. But if we're joining a new ball, um, and this is like the proper way of doing it, you could make a knot too, but I don't ever do that. So if we're joining a new ball, you just take that tail and then put that over the hook and then do that as the last uh, pull through, okay? So now I've rejoined where I had to cut it out. And then you got these tails left over, you can just work over them or um, weave them in as you go, weave them in at the end. Okay, so now I have one double crochet in that stitch. I need to add another double crochet and I'm just working over those tails so they don't slip out. 
Someone seems to be having the issue of not being able to put their hook through the yarn. Could that be because the um, their stitches are too tight? Mm, it could be because your stitches are too tight, or it could be because um, you can't see your stitch, right? So if you're having trouble seeing this, so now obviously you're not putting your hook through the yarn, you're putting your hook into a stitch. So if you're saying you can't put it into the stitch, right? It could be that you're, you can't see what you're doing very well. So maybe you're kind of trying to jam it in the wrong spot or like maybe down here or something like that where you're not supposed to go. Um, that's why I say practice with smooth yarn because when you can see your stitches, it's very easy to get your hook into it, right? So let me show you. So I'm gonna yarn over. And now here's my double crochet. Here's the top of my double crochet. It looks like a V. There's uh, the first loop and the second loop. And then I yarn over and just pull that underneath those two loops. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So when you say you can't, I'm trying to understand what you mean where you can't get it in. I mean, I, I don't know if it's because it's too tight or if because you can't see it. It could be what it's probably one of those two things. I've, I've never been too tight where I can't get my hook in there. You can almost always get your hook in there. But what you need to do is put your hook under. Um, if you have a stitch, your stitch is always going to the top of your stitch, whether whatever kind of stitch it is, is always going to look like this. It's going to look like a V, right? So there's a front loop right here, and there's a back loop right here. You want your hook to go underneath both of those loops. If you can't see those loops in the chenille yarn, you need to practice with a uh, different yarn, a worse weight yarn like this. It shouldn't be so tight that you can't get your hook under there, but that's possible, I guess. Um, my guess is it's probably because you, you just having trouble seeing it with this yarn, okay? So just, just practice with maybe another yarn. Um, also try going up a hook size and see if you have more luck. With this yarn, you really need, uh, like we, we were discussing earlier about the six millimeter and the six, mil six and a half millimeters. I really think you need at least an eight with this yarn. So you might just be like, giving yourself more stress with trying to do it with a, um, a smaller hook. It should be comfortable. It shouldn't be, you know, it should be comfortable. It should be easy. You shouldn't be struggling to, uh, the, the yarn should move, move through your fingers smoothly. The yarn should, um, it, it should never be too, a situation where you're kind of like trying to jam things in there and stuff like that. It should be smooth and easy because if it's not, you're going to have, um, just like a wonky looking end result. You shouldn't have a, any kind of struggle, right? If you are, then you need to like troubleshoot and start um, switching out your hooks. That, that'd be my advice. Okay, so now I'm at my last stitch here. And rem remember I said we need to end with just a single double crochet or just one double crochet into that last stitch, not an increase. So my last stitch, I did one double crochet. And now if, if you're not sure, just count, right? So let's just count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, and 36. Now let me look at my pattern. It tells me right here, at the very end of that round, I should have 36 double crochets. If I don't have 36 double crochets, I did something wrong somewhere. So you may have to just rip back and fix that. And that's the other thing with this yarn, it's difficult to, it can be, not always, it can be a little difficult to rip back because if you rip it back, it may snag somewhere like we talked about before with the little fuzzies getting snapped. Um, so yeah, just be, Practice, practice, practice with a smooth yarn if you're not used to this yarn. So now at this point is where we are going to 
change to the main color. Remember how I said that there was, I kind of messed up the pattern, not kind of, I did mess up the pattern right here, where I said, uh, fasten off the, the contrast color and join the main color. That should happen at the end of round three, not at the end of round four. Because what happens is, you see my little sample that I was doing? I went by the pattern and I didn't fasten off my contrast color until the end of round four. Here's round one, two, three, four. And then I didn't have enough of the uh, pink. Now the shape is right and the, the number of rounds are right, but the pink should start right here, like um, on the sample. So one, two, three, and then the pink starts. So let's do it the way I did the sample not the way I wrote it in the pattern. So let's change to the pink now, okay? We're gonna to change to the pink, sort of in the middle of the um, slip stitch. So we wanna slip, we need to do that slip stitch to join. So I'm gonna go one, two, three. This is the third chain. And I'm just gonna put my hook under there. And now what I can do at this point, instead of slip stitching with the white, I'm just gonna slip stitch with the pink multi or pull the slip stitch through with the pink multi. So now I have my hook inserted under the third chain of the beginning chain three, and I'm gonna put that pink on my hook and I'm gonna pull the pink multi through the third chain and then through the loop on the hook to complete a slip stitch. And now I've set myself up to start the next round with the pink multi. And then you can cut the white. We'll Liz, could this pattern be accomplished with a, with a, a smaller weight of yarn? Yeah, you're just gonna have a smaller pillow. So if you okay. use a smaller weight yarn, um, you're gonna have a smaller pillow and you're gonna need to use a smaller hook. It's and not a huge pillow as it is. It's like 15 by 15. So, um, yeah, but it would be cute for maybe like a baby bed. That would be cute. Would, um, would people, would you advise using a crochet marker? Um, I don't. You, when I usually use markers, I use them when we're working in continuous rounds. So uh, for continuous rounds, you know, you never join with that slip stitch, you just keep going around and around and around. And you always want to use a slip, slip a stitch marker for working in continuous rounds because you'll never know where the beginning of the round is. I can tell where the beginning of the round is on here because like this is the beginning of the round, right? Of course, you can tell because it's a long double crochet. You can't see it as much if it's maybe a small, like a shorter single crochet. So totally use a stitch marker um, and, you know, if you want to, there's absolutely no reason why you can't. You just put that marker right there and that tells you, okay, that's the beginning of my round. If you're having trouble seeing the stitches when you're counting um, and you're like, oh, I can't count because I can't see these stitches, then maybe a marker would help with that too. Yeah, but um, so you can use a marker whenever you want. There's no like, you know, I don't know how much easier it's gonna be with double crochets, because like I said, you can see that this is the beginning of the round, but maybe if you're like, oh, I'm having trouble with my counting and you wanna say, go like work five stitches and then put a marker and then work five stitches and then put a marker so you can count easier, that's always an option too. When you're working continuous rounds, always use a marker. So yeah, that's my recommendation. That's a good question though. I use markers a lot for sure. Okay, so just wanted to show you that beginning of the round. Let's let's go with our pink now. Remember, the pattern doesn't say to change colors until round four, but you want to change them in round after round three at the beginning of round four, not the end of round four. So that was my mistake. We're gonna we're gonna move on though, right? So now we're gonna do this is a little bit different because Oh no, this one we're still we're still expanding the circle. So we're gonna do one, two, three. Um, and then we're gonna double crochet in the same stitch and then double crochet in the next two stitches. And this is what I was kind of trying to describe before about that expanding circle and the kind of like the formula for it. 
So we're gonna make another double crochet into that same stitch and just work over that. See that tail? You can just work over it for like one or two stitches. And that'll kind of secure it a little bit. So I put two double crochets in that first double crochet. And now I'm gonna go one double crochet in the next double crochet. And then one double crochet in the next double crochet. So I've worked two sort of just no increase, right? And now I'm gonna increase in the next stitch. So one, two double crochets into the same stitch. So that's my increase. You can see how I've got two worked into there. And now no increase for two stitches. One, two, and increase. So one, two into the same stitch. And then no increase for two stitches. And then increase. And that, that was like what I was saying before. So like if we, like in the next round, we would do no increase for three stitches and then increase. And then in the subsequent round, we would do no increase for four stitches and on and on and on like that. But now we're only doing two. So no increase for two stitches. And then increase. And I'm gonna speed it up a little bit here so we have time to make the petals because the petals is a little bit different. So far we've been only working um, double crochets. In the next round, we're gonna add in a few single crochets and half double crochets. So I'm doing increase, no increase for two stitches. Increase, and no increase for two stitches. I'm not counting here just because it's, it's too much to keep in your head when you're trying to go like, okay, two in this stitch, one in the next stitch, and then also do like a complete count at the same time. So I usually will just go uh, no increase for two stitches, increase. And then at the end, I'll count and make sure I have enough total. So if there's any other questions, I'm just gonna move around this round. No, okay, good. <laughs> that means we're on the right track, you guys. Increase, no increase for two stitches. And then if we can get those um, last two rounds completed with the, the actual, where the petals sort of round, like uh, round, you know, like, what's the word? Curve. Um, we can get those two rounds done and then we can kind of stuff it and seam it. I'll show you how I seam it. It's very, very simple to seam it together. See how I've got a little, these, these little snags can give you trouble sometimes. But if, you, if it's really tiny like that, you just work right through it. Two, that's one. And another one. Okay, there we go. That's the end of my round. Now if I should, now if I count these, I count them fast. Two, four, six, eight. 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32, 34, 36, 38, 40, 42, 44, 46, 48. Hopefully I didn't mess up any of those. Let me just look at my pattern and see. 48 double crochet. So I have 48 double crochet. I know I did everything right. And now we can go on to the last two rounds. So for round five, 
we are going to start with a chain one. What are you supposed to do with the white? You just cut the tail and then at the end, you can weave it in. And I'll, I'll show you how to do that. With, with this, you may not really need to because it's going to be inside the pillow. But normally when you cut a color, you, you weave it in at the end. Liz, what would you advise if people are finding that their um, yarn is kind of like folding in? Okay, if it folds in a little bit like this. You see how mine's folding in a little bit like that? If you have the right stitch count, don't worry about it. As long as you have the right stitch count, don't worry about it. If you cut, you can kind of flatten it out. See, if I just go like that, it'll flatten it out. Just because of the way, you know, this, the movement of it, it could kind of fold in a little bit like that, but don't, don't concern yourself with that. As long as you have the right stitch count, you're, you're golden. Okay, if you have the wrong stitch count, <laughs> then you gotta rip it back and redo it. Just redo your round wherever you messed up, right? So I'm gonna slip stitch here in my third chain. Sometimes that chain's hard to get under both loops. So I just go under one. So I'm gonna slip stitch to join that round together. Now my round is joined. And instead of chaining three, like we have been, we're just gonna chain one because we wanna make only a single crochet and a single crochet is a short stitch. So we don't need to chain up so high. So I just made one chain. And now into that same stitch, I'm gonna insert my hook, yarn over, pull through. And now that I have two loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through both of those loops. And now I made a single crochet. Now this point, you see how it's kind of harder to see that that's the beginning of the round. At this point, I may say, okay, well, I'm just gonna add a little stitch marker there because, just because I don't wanna screw it up and with this fuzzy yarn, it's hard to see. So you could just put a stitch marker right under that stitch and keep it there. And that way, you know, that's the first stitch of the round. Uh, with main color chain one, we did that and then we did single crochet. So we single crocheted in that stitch. Okay, the chain one doesn't count as anything. In the previous rounds, the chain three counted as a stitch. Um, and that's just kind of normal crochet with double crochets. The chain three counts as a stitch. With single crochets, the chain one almost never counts as a stitch. Sometimes, but almost never. So we did single crochet in the next stitch, and then we're gonna do half double crochet in the next stitch. So here's my next stitch. I'm gonna do half double crochet, which we start with a yarn over. And then we insert under the two loops. And then we yarn over again, pull that loop through. I have three loops on my hook, just like a double crochet. So everything started just like a double crochet, right? The only difference is at the end, we just yarn over and pull through all three loops on the hook instead of doing yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So yarn over, pull through all three loops on the hook. And that's my half double crochet. It's like the height is in between the single and the double crochet. We'll do a few more of those too. So, um, and then it says two double crochet in each of the next four stitches. So now we're gonna increase four times. So here, 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 and here, we're gonna increase and we're gonna do those double crochets again. So double, that's a bit taller. And that's what's gonna make it kind of curve because we're changing, you know, we're, we're using different stitches with different heights. Two in this one, we're increasing over four stitches. So that means I'm putting two double crochets in each of the next four stitches. Okay, so let's just recap. I did a single right here. I did a half double right here. And then I did one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two double crochets. Okay. Uh, two doubles. Go ahead. How long do you think it takes um, to finish this project? Let's see, what time, <laughs> what time are we at? Oh, we're, we're so close to the end. Um, we're not gonna get to finish it, but we're on the second to last round. So, We've been here for about an hour. And of course, if I was really 
you know, doing it fast and not talking through it, I would be able to do it faster. So I would say like less than two hours because all we have to do now is make one more of these and um, stuff it. So what I'm gonna do is kind of, I'm just gonna talk through this really quick. I'm gonna do like maybe a couple more. So if you guys can stay a couple extra minutes, I'll show you how to uh, seam it together, okay? But I, would, I just wanna show you that we did those four um, increases. And now we're just gonna go back to the same thing that we did before. So we're gonna go kind of back down the curve. So we're gonna go half double crochet, and then we're gonna work a single crochet. And that just forms sort of the start of that curve of the petal, right? And then I'm just gonna do that all the way around. And once I do that all the way around, it'll form all the petals. So single, half double, two double crochets in each of the next four stitches. So increase, 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 and was that four times? That was three times. Increase. And then half double again, right? So half double, yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through, three loops on the hook, yarn over, pull through all three loops. And then single, insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two to make a single crochet. So now I would do that all the way around. Now see how you're, it's already starting to sort of make a little curvy petal. What happens in the next round is we do the same exact thing. We work a single, a half double, and now because I did all those increases with the double crochets, I ended up with eight double crochets in the center of my petal. So in the next round, I'm gonna decrease those double crochets again and end up with 16 double crochets, right? So I'm gonna put two double crochets in each of the double crochets, and which eight times two is 16. So then, and then a half double and a single. See if you can see that here. So this is what we're at, what we kind of ended on right here this round. In the next round, we got the singles here. So that's why it's it's made that curve because that's a shorter stitch. And then you made a half double, so kind of it slants it, and then all those double crochets. Okay. So now once you get, let's just pretend this is finished because I want to show you how to see that. This one is actually finished. So when you're finished with that very last two rounds where you're doing the increases for the petals, it will look something like this. You'll have 16 double crochets in the center of the petal, and then you'll have like the half doubles on the, each side, and then you'll have the singles right here where, where like it dips, okay? And then all you have to do is take your two, I apologize, an hour is not enough to finish this, but I'm gonna pretend this is finished. You take your two petals, you make sure the pretty front side is facing out, right? So here's where my tails are and everything. You could weave these in, but because it's gonna go on the inside, like why bother, right? Unless you think they're gonna fall out. I would just put them inside like that. I wouldn't bother weaving them in, but you can if you want. So here's my other inside, right? So put the insides on the inside because we want the pretty part on the outside. And then on the, on the outside, okay? And then we're just gonna start, you don't do any stuffing yet. You're gonna start seaming almost all the way around and then you're gonna stuff it. So let's just grab some of this. We're, you're gonna line up your petals. It's not gonna line up nicely because I don't have the, the right number of stitches. But once you have the two panels, let's go, maybe this will be easier. Let's pretend this is another panel because I have the right number of stitches. Let's pretend this is two panels and I'm lining up, you can start anywhere, I'm lining up these um, petals. So let's start at the single crochets. So I'm gonna put my hook through the first and then through the second because we're gonna attach these. And then I'm gonna join this yarn. 
new, uh, new yarn, pull it through both, and then just slip stitch it, right? Or chain it. And then I'm gonna go through that same, so, wait, hold on. This is how I usually do it. I was trying to, I put a slip stitch on the hook, right? And then I put it through, but you don't have to, you can do it either way. Okay, pull that through. Now I chain one and then work a single crochet through both of those. And now then I just take the next two stitches, insert my hook under both loops of both stitches and make another single crochet. And then go through both thicknesses and make another single crochet. And then all you have to do is just single crochet through both um, thicknesses, so both panels, right? So normally you're only going under two loops per stitch because that's what a stitch has is the two loops. But here we're going under two loops of the stitch of the panel closest to you and two loops of the stitch of the panel furthest from you. And that's just obviously joining the panels. Now there's tons of different ways you can join things. You don't have to join with a slip stitch or with a single crochet. You can join with a slip stitch if you want, like just like that. I think a single crochet makes it pretty though. Um, you can join with your like needle and thread and just kind of sew it together. But I think it's easier and quicker to join it with a, with a single crochet. So then you have a nice little sort of seam like that. Just make sure you're lining up the stitches properly. See how I lined them up here and I lined them up in the back and they are just completely joined. So then you're gonna get like, a, this is not a good example because it's not two panels, it's one that I folded. But once you get all the way around till there's maybe like a third of the piece left open. So like go around, go around one, two, three, four, maybe uh, four of the petals and leave these two open and then just start stuffing it. So take your fiber fill, break it up into smaller pieces, like, you know, kind of break it up a little bit so it goes and then just stuff it all in however you want it, make it nice and clean. And then once you get the stuffing to where, you know, it looks good and it's nice and flat and whatever, then you just finish those two last joints and that's it. See, this is what the single crochet join looks like. It looks nice and it, it's hidden well and it um, it's quick and easy. So let me just see, I know we're over, oh, we're only over a few minutes. So I know I had to do the seaming quick, sorry you guys. But let me see if we have a couple more minutes, if you guys wanna stick around, I can take any other questions that maybe I didn't get a chance to answer. Anybody have anything? Um, we do have a one. Um, mm -hmm. In the um, Catherine says, I got to the middle. Did you go around the middle with the shell stitch? Nope, I didn't do any shell stitches. the The way um, we have this curve on the petal is by working single crochets here and here, half double crochets like around sort of the edge where it curves and then increasing double crochets um, in the center of the petal. So that's what changes the height and makes that curve. So no shell stitches needed. A shell stitch is really just like a bunch of double crochets in one stitch anyway. So like a shell is usually like five uh, double crochets in one, one stitch. So we did, we definitely did increasing here to make it curve like that. Um, yeah, so it's just kind of double crochet increases, which which kind of make it look like a shell in appearance. Hope that answers that question. Any more? <laughs> um, Lana is wondering, oh, I lost it. Um, does the, does the half stitch 
does the single st- single crochet mm-hmm. go into the half double crochet? No, the single crochets go into the single crochets. The half double crochets go into the half double crochets. There's no increase on those. And then the double crochets in the center of the petal is where you do the increases. So for um, round, so when you're working round um, four, right? It says two double crochet in the, no, I'm sorry, round five. When you're working round five, it says double crochet in each of the next four stitches. So when you go from round four to round five, you're working round five into all double crochet stitches because round four is all double crochet stitches. There's no half doubles and there's no singles. So when you when you transition from round four to round five, you just work a single crochet into the double crochet from the previous round and then a half double crochet into the double crochet from the previous round and then four increases into the double into the four double crochets of the previous round okay and then when you transition from 5 to 6 now you have singles and half doubles because round 5 has singles and half doubles so the first single goes into the first single from round 5 and the half double crochet goes into the half double crochet from round five. And then you should have eight double crochets. So then you're gonna work two double crochets into each of those eight double crochets. Right, so you should have um, like 16 double crochets at the top of the petal. But no, you shouldn't have it. You, the singles should go into the singles, the half doubles should go into the half doubles, and the doubles should go into the doubles in rounds um, five and six. Okay, and I saw somebody said you make two petals. Yes, so, you, so what we went through the first flower, you make one flower, and then you make another flower. So you need two of them because you need one for the front and one for the back. Then you join those two with that single crochet join that I just showed you join around and around. And then before you complete um, closing it, you have to stuff it and then stuff it as nicely as you can and then complete closing it, okay? All right, Any anybody else? It's so hard for me to read the questions on this thing. Let's see. It is it is hard to read the questions. They disappear. <laughs> um, yeah, they disappear. Let's see. Oh, what happens if you have a little bit of space for another? Oh, I lost it. Another, petal, but not petal. another. Okay, I think I understand your question, Jessica. I think what you're saying is, like your um, you didn't line it up properly. So if you're saying like, okay, I came to the end. And now let's say I came to the end of seaming this and um, right here I have like only three stitches. Where's my camera? Right here I only have like three stitches, but I have a bunch of stitches here like this. And then it's gonna kind of like fold over right, like that, right? So you've got this like crease or whatever. That means you didn't seam it, right? So that means that you skip stitches or you um, probably you skip stitches. So just rip it back a little bit to where that sort of fold it looks like. So like, like you, if you get to the end, right? And you're like, oh man, this is like, I have no more stitches to work into here, but I have like five stitches to work into here. You probably just skip some stitches because you should have the same number of stitches in this flower as you do in this flower. So if you do it one-to-one, meaning if you insert your hook, into the stitch of this flower, and then you insert your hook into the next stitch of the, the other flower that you're joining, and you join that with a single crochet, you shouldn't have any stitches left over at the end because you have an equal number of stitches on each panel. So that just tells me that you probably just skipped a stitch somewhere. Um, so like if I went into this stitch, but I skipped this stitch of this panel and I went over here, 
and I left like too many stitches unworked. That's what, that's probably what caused that. So just pull it back gently so you don't rip up your yarn. Pull it back like this and, you know, just kind of start over. To start over and make sure you're doing one to one. So the stitch that's on this panel, you want to match with the stitch that's on this panel and don't skip any stitches. If you don't skip any stitches, you should have the exact number of stitches um, on both. Okay. What if I want to make my petals higher or longer? Then you would have to, um, you could try it. Just try, just try doing it the same way I did it. So single crochet in the single, half double in the half double, and then increase your doubles uh, from 16 to 32. So two in each of those. I don't know if, it's, if it'll work. I haven't tried it, but you can try it, Gina. That was Gina's question. Thanks, appreciate it. I just want to go through these guys. Thank you for um, sticking with me a little longer. I know we went over time. Can you explain the last round again? How many you should use? Musik asked how many yarn of the white. So you should, for this pillow, you should only need one ball of the multi and one ball of the white. It is hard, Lily. It's a, I, that's why I labeled it as intermediate because <laughs> maybe not all. Yeah, this is intermediate level for sure. And I should, I'm pretty sure I labeled it intermediate. I try to label my classes intermediate. So how to finish off at the very end after stuffing. We did round six. We were unable to get to round six. See this little piece? I only got to round five, but round six is um, the same. So in round six, you're doing a single in the single, half double and a half double, and then increasing in each of these doubles. So two in each of the double crochets. So if I had eight for like the sort of the curve of the petal, in round six, I would have 16, right? Because I'm doing two in each. This was wonderful. I mean, to spend two hours working on a project. Yeah, it's it's a lot to get through in one hour, um, especially when you're working with this more difficult yarn. But this is actually a quick project. It's just, I think the yarn makes it a little bit harder, but it's so soft and like, you know, fun and chenille -y <laughs> at the end. It just takes getting used to like everything else. Maybe you could make some, like if you have like a smooth, chunky yarn, you could make a couple with that yarn and see if that makes it easier for you before you move on to the chenille. Um, yeah, so I think that was it, right? A fun project. How do you do a double crochet? Caleb, you have to watch the rerun because we are the replay on Monday because we did the double crochet a bunch in the beginning. Yeah, this is okay. I think that was it. I think. I think we got through all of those, you guys. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. The magic ring is, um, I, I, oh, a lot of these projects start with the magic ring. So that's something that would, if you can master that, uh, you're, you're going to be okay because you're going to use that a lot. So that's one of those things that is worth the practice. Um, the chain four, then did the double and the last stitch instead of the magic ring. The magic ring is only to start Lillian. Okay. That's only to start around. You'll never use a magic ring any other time except to start around. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, guys, I'm going to go because I don't want to keep you too much longer. I know I've kept you <laughs> over a long time, but if you missed anything, I know it's a lot. Go ahead and watch the replay on YouTube and uh, check out, you know, check out my classes. I do one per month and thank you so, so much for your patience and thank you for being here with me and hopefully I'll see you again and have a great rest of your weekend. Bye guys.